One of the biggest mistakes you can make when you visit Washington DC is getting a rental car at the airport and trying to drive it around. I know this can be a bit jarring to visitors, especially if you're used to driving everywhere back home and getting a rental car by default wherever you travel. But if your primary objective is to see and do things in the city, a rental car is often more of a burden than a convenience. It's stressful driving in DC. And while it's kind of a myth that there is nowhere to park, it is true that there are very few free places to park. The good news is there are a plethora of other ways of getting around. I actually ranked all 11 of them from worst to best. So check out the video description for the link if you wanna watch that. And hello, my name is Rob. I'm a tour guide and the founder of Trip Hacks DC Tours. On this channel, I share my best tips, tricks, and hacks for exploring Washington DC. And over at triphacksdc.com, you'll find info about tours, and more. After four and a half years of posting videos on this YouTube channel, and even more as a tour guide, I have heard about plenty of mistakes that travelers have made. And I rounded them up so that you can hopefully avoid making them too. With that said, let's continue. Mistake number two is picking a hotel in an inconvenient location. There are an almost overwhelming number of hotel choices in DC. And one of the most important factors that goes into choosing one is, where is it located? I have a guide over at triphacksdc.com slash hotels where I detail 11 areas where I recommend staying. So as long as you pick a hotel in one of the 11 areas, you'll be okay. But even with 11 to choose from, people still ask me, well, what about this area? Or what about this other area? And my advice is stick to the 11. Because during your trip planning process, finding a hotel that's pretty far away or one that's not really that close to Metro might seem okay, especially if the price is cheap. But here's the thing. I've never heard someone say they regretted picking a hotel in a convenient area. I have heard plenty of times from people who regretted picking a hotel in an inconvenient area. Mistake number three is wearing the wrong shoes. Footwear is extremely important when you visit Washington DC because inevitably you're going to do a lot of walking. You're going to do a lot of walking outside, like on the National Mall. And you're probably going to do a lot of walking inside, especially if you go to any museums. Now, I put shoes into one of three categories. The first are shoes that you tolerate for special occasions, like weddings, but that are otherwise completely uncomfortable. The second are shoes that are comfortable if you're just lounging around, like sandals, but are uncomfortable if you actually need to walk any distance. And the third are shoes that are perfectly comfortable whether you're walking, running, playing tennis, or any other physical activity. I almost exclusively wear shoes from this third category because when you're on a trip in DC, the first two just aren't gonna cut it. Mistake number four is not researching the basics. Let me ask you this. Do you know what walk left, stand right means? If you do, then you know the basic rules for riding the Metro. That's great. And honestly, if you're watching this video at all, this mistake probably doesn't really apply to you. But there are some folks who travel here who don't think they need to spend any time learning about DC. They just assume things about it, either from the movies or because they think it'll be exactly like where they live. And in many cases, it just isn't. The good news is this is an easy mistake to avoid. Just watch a whole bunch of Trip Hacks DC videos and you'll be good to go. Mistake number five is trying to DIY everything. I truly believe you should see the major sites on a guided tour. If that's a Trip Hacks DC tour, great. But if not, there are plenty of other great local tours out there. In fact, I'll link you down to a blog post about all of my recommended local tour companies. Really, the most important thing is that you go with a local company, not a big chain brand. But wait, you might already be down there typing in the comments, why even take a tour at all? The Monuments and Memorials are already completely free and I can just walk around and see them on my own. And that's true. But it's also like saying on my trip, why eat at any restaurants? I can just pick up a loaf of white bread and Oscar Mayer lunch meat at CVS and make my own meals. I mean, technically they're both food. In fact, you could DIY every single meal on your trip if you wanted to. But the reason you go to restaurants when you travel is because they're an experience. Because it's an opportunity for a professional to provide you with a service that you can't easily get on your own. And if done right, a memory that you'll be able to take home and have forever. I could go on and on all day about why I love tours, but instead I'll link to a video in the description that you can watch on this topic if you want. Mistake number six is 
too many day trips. I find this one happens most often by folks who are visiting from far away. You figure, well, since I already traveled all this distance, I might as well swing by Baltimore and Annapolis and Gettysburg and Charlottesville while I'm in the area. And while these are all great places for a day trip, if you're only in DC for say five days, going on four day trips leaves you almost no time in DC itself. So my advice on this is, if your trip is three days or less, stick to DC. If your trip is four or five days, do up to one day trip. If your trip is six or seven days, do up to two day trips. And if you're here for more than seven days, then you can do more. Mistake number seven is never leaving the National Mall. It's possible to spend an entire week in DC chock full of activities and never leave the National Mall. But just because it's possible doesn't mean it's the best way to design an itinerary. And yes, there are some big tourist sites that are not on the National Mall, like Arlington Cemetery, and the National Zoo. One of my personal favorite things to do is go to a neighborhood and just explore a little. Popular places where you can do that here include Georgetown, Capitol Hill, and The Wharf. And I've actually done live streams on this YouTube channel exploring those areas. So you can check that out in the video description if you wanna take a virtual walk with me. Folks who spend a lot of time on the National Mall tend to get frustrated by the lack of good dining options. There are plenty of great restaurants in DC, they're just not on the mall. And while the museums and big federal sites are great to visit, they can get a little exhausting if that's all you do. So it's helpful to break up your trip with some other activities as well. But hey, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around. If you want me to tell you about even more mistakes that people have made, give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment and let me know you wanna see a part two. And after that, I highly recommend another Trip Hacks DC video. So go ahead and click or tap right over here to watch the next one. And if you're coming to DC and interested in signing up for a Trip Hacks DC guided tour, you can click or tap on the Capitol Dome on the left side of my head. That'll send you right over to TripHacksDC.com where you can see all of the tours that we offer. Enjoy your trip.